I was a big fan of the Atari 2600 when I was growing up. And yeah, I had the great arcade games whenever I'd go out, but at home, all I had was the Atari 2600. It's been widely documented, the famous console crash of 1983. However, some of my favorite Atari games came out in 1983. So if you had an Atari 2600 back in 1983, here are the games that you were playing in that year. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Make sure you're subscribed. Always new videos on the way. And you got to watch this video to the very end because you need to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. Got the arcade classic in Battlezone. Now, Battlezone in the arcade is more vector-based. It gives it that 3D appearance. But on the Atari 2600, it actually kind of gives it graphics. Maybe it's a little bit of an upgrade. It plays very similarly. You're a tank basically in the middle, and the tanks are coming towards you. Now, you can move forward, you can move backward to try to dodge their attacks. But you just basically have to shoot them before they hit you. This game, now that I think about it, may be one of the first first-person shooters. <laughs> in, kind of in a way. At least maybe a behind-the-shoulder shooter or behind-the-tank shooter. Uh, that first-person view. I don't know. We'll call it whatever you want. I'm a huge fan of Battle Tank. Love seeing this. Had a lot of fun with it on the 2600. Had a lot of fun with it in the arcade, too. It's, it's actually still kind of fun today. Gravatar is a game to me that is super hard. And that's because it uses gravity in a way, and momentum. Well, you're in outer space here, and that sun in the middle, that's basically your gravitational pull. You have to like, you know, avoid getting close to it, because it will suck you in and, you know, kill you, basically. These other planets that are around the area, you can actually go into those planets and defeat the turrets that are on there as well. There's, like, these little energy cubes that you can pick up, too. But all the meanwhile, all of these planets have their own gravitational pull, and sometimes, you know, some of them are stronger than other ones, too. It's, it's really cool. It's a really cool concept, even for 1983. I mean, for the NES, we had Solar Jet Man. Kind of like that, uh, maybe not as well, but still kind of. You also have these UFOs flying around trying to shoot you down too, and when you get close to them, then it goes into more of like a one-on-one -on -one battle. Admittedly, this is one of those Atari games that I didn't play growing up, so this is one of those games I went back to as I got older through emulation. Um, still have a lot of fun with this game though, Gravatar, um, according to the title screen, came out in 1983. You have Joust, another arcade classic, and this is one that I had for the 2600. And when it comes to arcade ports to the 2600, this one's done really well. If you're not familiar with Joust, but you are familiar with Balloon Fight, it plays a lot like that. You have to pop them on top before they hit you. Now, like, you're like these, uh, these kind of riding warriors on these ostriches. And when you hit them, they turn back into an egg. Now, if you let the egg stay there long enough, uh, the warrior will hatch again, and another ostrich will come by, and they'll become another, you know, another enemy for you. Even of a harder difficulty, no doubt. So you gotta, you know, bop them off the thing, and then grab the egg, and then that's uh, basically how you defeat them. And the more you move on, the platforms start disappearing, the lava becomes more of an obstacle. Great two-player game on this one as well. I love Joust in the arcade, and I played a lot of Joust on the 2600. Dare I say it? Pigs in Space! Or however they say it on the Muppet Show. Pigs in Space was a reoccurring Muppet Show skit, and now we have Pigs in Space on the 2600. It came out in 1983. Now there are three pigs you can choose from, one of them being Miss Piggy, and then it was two other pigs. And the three pigs in this game are a different game. Now one of them is... Come on. Basically Space Invaders, right? It's Space Invaders with chickens. You got Gonzo there at the top. There's the UFO. That's, you know, it's, just, it's kind of a silly game. It's the Muppets. It's the Muppets. You can't take it too seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shoot the chickens. You know, when you're at the final one, it starts moving faster. It's just a simplified version of Space Invaders. The Miss Piggy version? Well, think like Frogger a little bit. Or maybe like Freeway. You just have to get across to the other side of the screen. Uh, with all these things. There's like what looks like like asteroids or uh, they look like meatballs to me, these little worm thingies. But you can also like, you know, eat these meatballs? I don't know. I never questioned what they were. That's just, that's just how I played it, I guess. <laughs> and the final one, hey, check this out. You actually have a vertical shooter. That's right, a vertical shooter on the Atari 2600. It's not uncommon. Uh, this one's interesting because you, you shoot up and then it arcs to the either left or right. And that's how you defeat the enemies that are on the left or right, depending on what your last button press was if you're moving left or right. This one's actually a little difficult. You can't touch the walls or anything or you'll lose a life. But Pigs in Space, uh, three games in one. One of my favorite arcade games of all time, especially for nostalgia's sake, on the Atari 2600, and again, done very well for its time, is Jungle Hunt. Jungle Hunt comes in four stages. The first one is the vine swinging. This is the game that taught me patience. This is the game that taught me don't just jump when you're, you know, closer to the edge. You have to time your jumps right so the other vine will be to your favor. As you swing from vine to vine from this stage, then you move on to the swimming stage. You gotta watch your oxygen meter and also gotta watch the uh, alligators here. And you can stab them from underneath. That's how you can defeat them if you'd like, or just avoid them, while all trying to, uh, you know, breathe. 
at the same time. Get your uh, get your oxygen meter going there. Some alligators move differently than others. Some of them are a little bit more faster, but yeah, it's, it's still pretty easy going on this one. To me, the most difficult of the four is this boulder one here. Now in the arcade, you're running up a diagonal slant. This one's just, uh, you know, flat. But you just gotta jump over these. You gotta time your jumps right so you jump over these boulders. Sometimes there are bigger ones that you can either jump over or try to duck under. Sometimes ducking under is the, the easiest route for these guys. And then finally, you got the cannibals at the end. This is also the game that taught me what cannibals were. And they are what's preventing you from getting to your girlfriend in this game. Uh, a couple of them you gotta jump over. Will I make it over this one? Uh, not today. Not today. It's alright though. Still a fun game. Snoopy and the Red Baron came out in 1983. Uh, this is a game I remember specifically seeing on the shelf at KB Toys and Hobby. And it was a game I really, really wanted and never had it. So it's another one of those games I didn't get a chance to play until later in life. And ah, it's okay, it's just a one-on-one -on -one shooter. You can move back and forth. Uh, kind of cool how the airplane kind of, you know, zooms in and out of view and everything like that. Oh, yeah, it was cool effects for the Atari 2600, even in 1983. I was a big Peanuts fan, loved the Charlie Brown series, loved all of that, you know, Snoopy and the Red Baron, a classic. It actually shows you the damage marks, like when you're actually being shot. Grab them before they get you. Snoopy and the Red Baron, why not? Kangaroo, yet another classic arcade game that I absolutely loved. It's Donkey Kong. Come on, you just rock up the ladders and, you know, get to your guy. Uh, however, in this one, you're a mother. This might be one of the first video games you play as a female, actually. And you gotta get to your little baby Joey at the very top there. Grab your apples, those are points. You gotta watch out for the monkeys who are trying to get in your way. You can punch the monkeys, fortunately. Uh, they're always chucking apples at you, you gotta dodge those. Ring the bell, it'll make the items come back in a different flavor, but I, I, just, I just try to get to uh, how many you know stages I can get through in this game. Always been a big fan of Kangaroo. They even made a Saturday morning cartoon as part of the Saturday morning Supercade lineup with Kangaroo way back in the day. Uh, fun game. I still like playing this game today. Crawl. Now, such an awesome movie. To be honest with you, as much as I say I love the movie, I don't remember much of it. But I do remember the glaive. I remember the weapon. I thought that weapon was the coolest weapon of all time. Now, Crawl in the Arcade and Crawl in the 2600, to me, are different games. Now, I honestly should look up a walkthrough sometime here. Uh, but as I was trying to play this game, and it's like you're trying to, you know, get your girlfriend or, you know, protect your lady to the thing here. But these guys keep coming out and, you know, they're tr trying, to <laughs> trying to steal her. And then the next stage brings me to this spider web thing. And... The more you get hit by those spider webs, it just keeps you on pushing you back, pushing you back, pushing you back. You wait too long, the hourglass runs out, uh, the spider just charges right towards you. It's actually kind of a cool color effect when it poisons you. And it looks like I'm just trying to get to this little door area, and then that's when something appears, and I'm trying to get to it, but then as soon as you hit the spider web again, then it resets itself, and you have to do it all over again. I, I need to look up a walkthrough for this game. Yeah, it's a game I didn't play back in the day, but it came out in 1983, and I love the movie, and uh, maybe you played it, and maybe you can let me know in the comments, how do you play this game? I'm really interested. I did have Sword Quest Waterworld for the Atari 2600 back in 1983. And as much as I don't know how to play like the overworld map part, I just walked around and went through the doors and played the mini games that were basically there. Like with this thing with like the shoes and stuff like that, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on with the items and all that, but I can do this part, you know, to get you the other side of the screen. I can do that. There's a couple different ones too. There's one of them I you know, like swim all the way down, watch out for the squids. You know, they'll, they'll just kind of push you out of the way, move you out of the way and all that. Then you get to another room with like stuff. No, the instructions wouldn't have helped. I had the instructions. I mean, we bought this game new. And there's, I don't know. I, I just, I, and it wasn't even the fact that I was too young at the time. I mean, I was old enough. I could figure stuff out. I kind of liked this part too. I don't know if I've ever actually made it to the very end of this stage. It's like Frogger or like, you know, just like the other games. Uh, just like Pigs in Space a little bit, where you have to like just get to the other side of the screen. But, uh, yeah. Pole position for the Atari 2600 actually played pretty well, believe it or not. Interesting enough, your joystick was the upshift and downshift, and your button was the brake. There was no accelerator because you just always accelerated the entire time. It actually worked out pretty well. You'd figure for a racing game, you hold the button down and that's what makes you, you figure your button, you only have one button. You figure that's your accelerator. But no, this game, the button's the brake and you're always moving because why wouldn't you be moving? Pedal to the metal the entire time. And then your joystick is your gear shift. It's either, which is only like low and high. You don't have like five gears or anything. Uh, but I thought it looked great. And I thought it looked cool for the Atari 2600 especially. Um, pole position is always a fun game in the arcade. It has the, the uh, steering wheel and all that. But it yeah, actually uh, played pretty well. The other cars are, you know, much to be desired and all that. You know, just basically a, a yellow blob, yellow brick or something. <laughs> Looks like stacked Legos. But yeah, pole position for the Atari 2600. 1983, believe it or not.
We also had Taz. Uh, I remember when my dad picked this up and brought it home, and I just had a lot of fun with this game. I remember even me then, I was just like, oh, they're still making new games for the Atari 2600. Super cool. Of course, little did I know, they'd still be making games until like 1990, but still. As the Tasmanian Devil, which is just a whirlwind, you could, this game could have been called Twister, it could have been called anything else, but may as well throw the uh, license in there. Eat the food, not the dynamite. That's basically all that is. You're just trying to eat the food as much as you can, avoiding the dynamite as it comes through. You do, you'll eat it, you'll blow up, and you know, you'll lose a life. The farther in the stages you get, the more the food swaps out, which is always good news. And then when the food swaps out, it might be worth more points for you. So congratulations there, you made it to the next stage. Taz is a pretty fun one. Galaxian came out in 1983 for the Atari 2600. It's okay. It's a decent port. It's, I mean, it's Galaxian, so it's during that time when, like, everything had to be Space Invaders. I mean, it's it's no Galaga, but it's it's fine. It's, it plays a lot like a Galaga. It plays a lot like any of those. And now, the aliens just move back and forth. They don't charge down at you. I mean, they charge down one at a time. But it's not like Space Invaders where, like, where every, you know, every uh, pivot, they move down another square or anything like that. Nothing like that. They just move back and forth and annoy you. And they'll shoot at you from above, and then every once in a while, one of them will come down. Or sometimes a couple of them will come down and, uh, you know, try to ruin your day. Good old Galaxian. It's fine. <laughs> And then we had Mario Brothers, and get this, Mario Brothers came out in the arcade in 1983, it also came out in the Atari 2600 1983. And I played me a ton of Mario Brothers on the Atari 2600 in 1983, because I, I loved the arcade game, I uh, loved it on the Atari 2600 as well. It was the first game I ever looped, I actually played it long enough, so I got to level 99 and then went back to like level either double zero or went back to level one, whatever it was. Don't need to talk a whole lot about Mario Brothers, you, you bump the enemies from underneath, you, you know, kick them over. These weird, uh, these weird square things are your coins. This game rules so much, the screen keeps shaking. Now, I'm, I'm capturing this footage via a mister, so I'm having some issues here on this game, so I won't spend too much time playing this, but, uh, but Mario Brothers came out in 83. Love the game. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And we'll be looking at more games through more systems through more years in the near future. You gotta be subscribed, because there's always something new coming up soon. Thanks for watching.